friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome to amelia's five month baby update like yeah could you a baby and your five month old and my five month postpartum update i feel like it's been forever since i filmed um i actually haven't even uploaded her four months update yet so like that just kind of gives you a little hint on to how things are going over here <laughs> this video is going to go up after christmas so i hope everyone had an amazing christmas a good hanukkah earlier in the month and just like the best holiday season in general let's start with amelia i cannot believe she's five months old already i feel like i blinked and i mean truly though the time between three months and five months your baby's development balloons it I feel like I blinked and she went from being a tiny squishy little infant, little newborn, to now like a little baby. A little baby who can reach for things, who can grab for things, who has started like wanting to talk. So it's so cute if you like start talking at her or cooing at her, she will then start trying to talk and coo back and it's adorable. It's so cute to see like the little conversations that she has and that's been so fun to see um she has definitely perfected the art of rolling from back to front she's still working on front to back but she is getting there and i can also see when she's on her tummy like first of all she can push herself up so high she's such a strong baby um she's also like sitting up and there have been a few times where i've been able to like obviously i'm sitting like right near her and i'm usually like have my legs in a straddle position but I can like take my hands away from her and she can sit up for like a few seconds. It's pretty amazing. When she's on her belly and she's like pushing herself up, I can see her starting to like want to shuffle her hips and her legs. And it's going to be so wild when she starts crawling. I cannot even. She loves being around people. She loves being around her brothers. She like desperately wants to be doing whatever they're doing all of the time. And it's so cute. Um, and the boys are so great with her. Um, in terms of feeding, is still uh, drinking the Similac Elementum. And I haven't started solids yet with her. Her pediatrician, well, the PA yesterday at the pediatrician's office, because um, she had her appointment yesterday, asked if we had started solids yet. And they asked me that back when she turned four months. But I'm pretty sure with all the kids, I didn't start solids until they were six months old. Although I will say with Hugo, I we did give him like I think the oatmeal cereal when he was around four months old because we thought maybe it would help with his sleeping which it didn't um, but I didn't like actually start incorporating food into his like routine until six months and so I figured like especially since em Amelia is like doing so well otherwise like why am I gonna push it you know so we'll enjoy this last month with just bottle feeding and then when she turns six months we'll start solids can't believe we're there already it's so wild you really you really do blink and it like all goes by um what else little miss let's talk about sleeping a little bit <laughs> we'll talk about sleeping a little bit you can see she has a little ball patch back here so she's in her snoo she we don't okay, funny story the snoo actually broke on us about a month ago in the middle of the night it stopped working and like at that point we had just like newly introduced her to the whole like rocking motion of this new and so she was pretty easy going about it not working anymore and so it was kind of like all right well let's not like why are we going to introduce something i.e the rocking why are we going to introduce something that is gonna like that we're gonna have to wean her off of anyway so like let's just leave it so she's been sleeping in the snoo but like we've just been using it as a regular bassinet and i think it might be time i think during this holiday break we are going to and by we i mean jeff is going to put together her crib in her bedroom and i think soon ish we are going to transition her from the bassinet to her crib um the only reason i haven't transitioned her yet because she is rolling over and if you are swaddling a baby you're supposed to transition them into their crib when they start rolling over because it's not safe but in the snoo you clip their swaddle in so they can't roll over and that's the only reason why i haven't because i haven't transferred her yet to the crib because she can't physically roll over otherwise i definitely would have but i'm a little like hesitant like i'm nervous because i know there's going to be an adjustment when we transition her into the crib like i remember the transition for theodore going into the crib was from the snoo was super easy and very straightforward and like not a problem at all 
but I feel like with Amelia, like every time we put her down in her bassinet, she wants to roll over and it's like a big thing. And I just have a feeling that it's gonna be a little bit of an adjustment for her when she gets in the crib, cause she's gonna wanna roll over right away. She will, and then it's like, okay, what do we do from there sort of thing. Like, so saying all of that, I'm thinking of transitioning her from the snoo swaddle into the Magic Merlin sleep suit. That is a sleep suit that we used with Hugo. We never had to use it with Theo. Um, it's just like a really big bulky arms out swaddle that prevents, well, it doesn't like fully prevent your child from rolling over, but it sort of restricts it a little bit and is a good transition between swaddle and absolutely no swaddle i also did get the dreamland baby products so like weighted sleep sack and weighted transition swaddle but i'm not sure i don't know i, I haven't really decided yet what we're gonna do all of that being said we did also start like very I, we did sleep train we have been sleep training in that we have been trying to strictly adhere to wake windows and a feeding schedule and like keeping her on that as much as possible like like today with the drop off school drop offs and then there's um like a little holiday concert at theodore school so this morning is a bit of a mess with her sleep schedule but i will say that like she does enjoy napping in her bassinet and i do find like the day is just like she's very good with staying on her schedule so with her week windows now that well now she's five months old so her week windows were an hour and a half we are now um because she's five months old doing an hour 45 minute week windows and then ideally she's napping anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes ideally 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 <laughs> which you learn after having a kid is like never actually what happens. But ideally, she would be napping for 90 to 120 minutes, so an hour and a half to two hours. Um, but she just, I mean, it depends. Like sometimes she'll take longer, longer naps, but for the most part, her naps are like 60 to 90 minutes, which is fine. And then at the very end of the day, she'll take like a little, you know, a little 30 minute cat nap before then usually it being like an hour 45 minute to a two hour stretch before bedtime, which is normally around seven. I can talk more about that if you want me to make like a separate video on her schedule because I do think it's really been helping and re really been working. Um, and we have done a little bit of sleep training in that like we've done the, you go in when they start crying, you give them a pet, you like give them their pacifier. She's, she's still using a pacifier and then leave. And then in five, five more minutes you go in like that sort of gradual interval. Um, and that seems to really help and really work for her. It, it hasn't been like a magic like, oh, now we just put her, like, for the most part, we can put her down in her bassinet and she doesn't fuss, she doesn't cry, and she just go, like, goes to sleep, which is great. But it hasn't been, like, a magic, like, oh, and now she's sleeping through the night. She's definitely not. Um, she's still waking up two to three times during the night. I'm trying to get rid of, so she usually wakes up, she usually, like, is uncomfortable. If we put her down at 7 o'clock, which is usually around the time we put her down, she's usually uncomfortable around 9 o'clock. I'll give her a pacifier because it's inevitably falling out of her mouth. Uh, and then a good night, she'll sleep until like 12 or 12.30. I'll give her three ounces of milk. Then she usually wakes up again around three. If she wakes up before three, I'll just, I've been trying to give her just her pacifier and like have her go back to sleep because you don't want to like overfeed your baby during the night and then have them be like really gassy and uncomfortable because that can mess with their sleep. So if it's before three, I'll just do pacifier. Three o'clock, I'll give her another bottle of milk. Usually then she's again like fussing around 4.30, between 4.30 and five. Again, I'll try to give her a pacifier. And then ideally she's like up for the day, 5.30ish, six, ideally. Um, so that's like our loose night schedule. I'm going to try, especially like when we transition her into the crib, try to get rid of that that middle feeding, whether that be like the two, sometimes, you know, the two o'clock or the three o'clock feeding, um, because I don't think she needs it. She's like eating plenty during the day and she's gaining super well. Um, but yeah, it's just, if you, if you also have a five month old or a baby in general, like you know how sleep is just, <laughs> I don't know, I've never had, I just never had, I mean, Theo was a good sleeper. Like there were nights where he slept for, you know, a solid, 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. sort of thing and like hopefully we'll get there with amelia but you know i've also had the opposite where i've had a kid up every two hours and you know survive that too so we're, we're trying our best over here um postpartum i would say like things are pretty straightforward honestly i don't like 
it's hard to even think of myself in the middle of all of this chaos but i will say that like my body is feeling a little bit better every day um i have not been able to like incorporate i'm a dance teacher and a pilates instructor so like i am like i am active during the week especially when i'm teaching but i haven't been able to like get back on my peloton or like go to a fitness class or anything so i in my brain it's like i haven't actually started working out yet even though i am active if that makes sense um and i will say like mental health wise and like hormone wise it's a little um chaotic right now <laughs> um my mental health has been a very up and down and i can i know it's very hormonal and i've been trying to as much as possible keep track of it um especially during the month because i did i did like officially get my period back and so it has been my period's been consistently coming like every you know 28 to 30 days and i've just been trying to keep an eye on like my mood and my hormones in relation to like where i'm in my cycle so um if i have more information when it comes to that i'll share or if like i figure out anything that helps with that i'll share because i do find that like you know it's just frustrating when same thing like when you're pregnant when you like start feeling overly emotional and you're like what is happening and you're like oh right like i'm pregnant or oh right like i am postpartum and my hormones are still not like quite leveled out or if you're like me and like your hormones never go back to like pre-pregnancy it's just sort of navigating this new normal of of your cycle so anyway i've definitely noticed that i've been trying to be more aware of that as i like journey through the weeks of my cycle um please let me know if you found any like if you've experienced the same if you found that like after xyz months that like it gets a little bit better um and yeah it's it's i just constantly have to like make sure that i'm doing things that you know like i can't be staring at instagram although like who has the time for that anyway but like you know just making sure that i'm protecting my mental health so that i can parent three children <laughs> while also navigating the hormonal ups, ups and downs of my cycle without feeling like I'm, I'm losing my dang mind, you know? You know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go now because we actually have to get ready for uh, the holiday concert at Theodore's Preschool. But thank you guys for hanging out with us this morning. Thanks for listening to our five month update. And I will see you real soon. You wanna say bye, baby? Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.